Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week. Got some rest in this weekend. Got to rest your brains a little bit. This is about to be a pretty action packed week in terms of earnings. And there's a couple good data sets, but mostly it's going to be earnings this week. So, first, we'll go over the economic calendar here. You can see Tuesday, we do have new home sales coming out. I'll probably highlight this as the most important for Tuesday. Other ones, not so much. That's going to kind of give you a little hint into the real estate market. And then Wednesday, we do have durable goods orders. And then we also have advanced retail inventories and then a whole set of inventories as well. So this could move the market, but uh, it just depends. I guess it depends on how extreme it is. Thursday, we have the GDP. I would say this is probably going to move the market, or at least has the potential to. And then we have our usual initial jobless claims. But most importantly, 10 o'clock is the pending home sales. This will be 30 minutes after the open. I've seen this move the market before, so keep an eye out for that. And Friday, the big one. So this is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge is the PCE. And it says the core PCE and then PCE year over year. So that should be interesting. And then also we have the regular consumer sentiment. As usual, consumer sentiment can move the market mid-session. So keep an eye out for that. But most importantly, the PCE is definitely going to be a market mover. Honestly, it just depends because the CPI always comes out first and then the PCE comes, you know, a couple weeks later. So the CPI kind of gets that, you know, kind of gets that out of the way. But the PCE, people do take a close look at it because it is the, you know, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. So, I mean, it just depends how it comes in. Could be a, you know, it could be an interesting mover there. So keep an eye out for that. And for earnings, you can see it's very action-packed. A lot of household names here. You can see we have Coca-Cola on Monday. This is going to be before open. Credit Suisse, not sure how that's going to go, the banking crisis and all. We also have Whirlpool, there's First Republic Bank, so FRC should be interesting. And then we also have Cleveland Cliffs here, you can see that. That should be an interesting one. CLF is a pretty fun ticker to trade. It is a steel company, so keep an eye out for that after the close. And then Tuesday, we have Verizon, UPS, Halliburton, GM, McDonald's, General Electric, 3M, Pepsi, Spotify, Raytheon Technologies, if you're into the defense sector. I also have Microsoft after the close, huge. This is a huge way to name and, you know, our top indexes is the NASDAQ and the SPY. We also have the alphabet. So this is Google. We have Enphase Energy. We have Visa, Chipotle, Texas Instruments. Another looks like another regional bank. And then Wednesday, we have Boeing. We got Meta, Roku, After Hours. Those are pretty big ones. And then Thursday, we have Caterpillar, American Airlines. We got, looks like Lily, Southwest Airlines, MasterCard, Crocs. Amazon, most importantly, so that'll be a big one. We got Intel, Snap, we got Cloudflare, we got Pinterest, we got United States Steel, so another steel name. We got Gilead. And then Friday, it looks like we got a couple big names for the energy sector, ExxonMobil and Chevron both. So both of these are the top way to name in the XLE ETF. So this is a pretty big day for energy. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. And yeah, that's pretty much for the big names. That's what I see. Oh, you got Colgate, Paul and Molliff too. So that should be a pretty interesting week. I mean, you could just see how many household names there are. So just keep an eye out for that. Realize this week can be pretty volatile and, you know, it's kind of unpredictable. So be careful with swing trades and taking too much overnight risk into some of these names, especially Tuesday with Microsoft and Google coming out. And then, you know, we got Meta Wednesday and then Amazon Friday or uh, Thursday. So just be careful, you know, swing trading this week. I feel like the way that some of these names are weighted into the indexes, they could have a huge influence on how price moves and nobody really knows how earnings will go. So kind of got to look at the technicals, maybe get a hint from that. But either way, even with technicals, I mean, earnings is just so unpredictable because you never know how they're, you know, how the report's going to go. So just keep that in mind. All right. Now that we went over the economic calendar and the earnings for the week, we're going to go ahead and get into the setups. I do have four for us this week. Last week was pretty good. Uh, CHPT charge point did really good the first day of Monday. It had like a 5% rally. Lyft did pretty good as well. Uh, PayPal had a Good 10 minute start at the open. I think it ripped like you know, almost 2% and then pretty much sold off for a couple of days after that. Gold had a nice little sell off as well for the puts that we were looking at. And it looks like it's still, you know, kind of trending downward. So it's got a good start to it, but could need a little more time. For those setups, I mean, it's pretty good. And I'm hoping this week, you know, we'll have pretty good setups as well. But this week we'll just have four instead of the usual five. I really couldn't find anything else that, you know, I was 100% about. I feel good about these, so we'll go ahead and get into them. And for the first one here, we're looking at Tesla. So they just did have earnings come out. You can see it was a massive gap down. It actually closed down almost 10% after their earnings report 
on 420. So that was 420 that it gapped down. They released the report on the 19th after hours. But you can see, I mean, it's pulling into this 163.91 support. So this is a major, major support slash, you know, pivot area. I'll circle it right here. So you can see this 163.91 is a pretty big deal. You'd even round it up just to like 164 probably. But it's a pretty nice bounce area. You can see it's pulling in there now. It did close above that on Friday. So it closed at 165.08, which is about a dollar a point over the support. So that's pretty good. Another thing that you will have to keep an eye out, though, this is an inside bar. So an inside bar is a consolidation bar. It is when the you know the candle closes within the body of the previous candle. And these can go either way. So an important thing you should do is mark the high and low of the inside bar. So mark the high and the low. We can even get rid of the, you know, the 164 support just to like, you know, so we can focus on the inside bar here. We do want to see it get over 166. So that's the inside bar high. We want to see it get over 166 for a signal in order to get back, you know, maybe to, for a gap fill or at least to this gap fill resistance at 169.70. And that would be good. Uh, this would go invalid if it went under that 161.32. It's breaking the inside bar low. That's a pretty good sign that, you know, it's probably going to continue lower. So that's just something to keep in mind. So we do want to see you get over that 166. We'll go ahead and set an alert. 166. We'll put inside bar high. Now you got an alert for 166. Just wait for that to hit. If it can get over 166, maybe open above it on Monday. That's a pretty good signal. Maybe look for it to make support on there. We could even zoom in a little bit. So you can see the high was that 166. You'd want to see it get over this. Maybe make a base off of it make support and then be able to go higher. It just depends. Sometimes it'll just break straight out and go up, head for that gap. But you know, you do want to see this 166. You want to see price staying above it once it gets over that. So if it went back within, you could just assume that it could chop between, you know, the inside bar high at 166 and the inside bar low at 161.32. So I am looking at calls on Tesla just because it's pulling into that support. But with the assumption that, you know, in case that it does get under that 161.32, you could look at puts, but I'd be really careful with puts just because it's still holding over that, you know, that major support we're looking at at 164. And as well, you know, I mean, it's got this big gap and a lot of times gaps will try to fill back. So you do want to be careful going shorter with that or, you know, looking at puts. So I'm strictly looking at calls in this. I really want to see that 166 get taken out. Once that 166 gets taken out, you can't see a potential gap fill. We could even mark this gap. That's our little gap slash golden zone. Once it gets up, up there and, you know, maybe it can break over that, there's a good chance it could fill back up. Could take a few days. Could take one session. You know, it just depends. But just want to make sure it's holding the support at 164, like I said. And you want to make sure it gets over the 166, absolutely, for a long breakout. Next, we're going into Qualcomm, ticker symbol QCOM. So you can see this is a test one test two, test three. This would be a test for trend line test. So this is a good chance to get hold up here. You can see their earnings is coming up. It looks like it's May 3rd, about 10 days. This is the amount of days left till it's earnings. So you will want to get out before then, but ideally you do want to see it hold up here. Could head up into that 50 EMA. I use that as a price target just because there's not any like clear support or resistance until up to this 128.20. Another area that can act as resistance is this uh, 200 SMA. With the, you, know, you see these dots, that's the 200 SMA. And then you have your regular 50 EMA right here. So the moving averages are good price targets if you don't have a clear shot for a regular support level. I guess if we zoomed in a little bit, you could say that this area right here, this 120.21, that can act as resistance because it's previous support. And you can see, I mean, it bounced off and then it had this little three-day rally right here. So it's a pretty big pivot off a pretty red day. So you can mark that. You do want to see it getting above that for sure. So that could be a short-term price target. If it gets over that 120.21, you can definitely see that 50 EMA right there. That's probably about as high as I could put us for right now just because, I mean, you have no idea how it's going to react to the moving averages. Uh, there's even a little downtrend line here. So we could probably put you up you know, to the downtrend line max too, which might align with about the 50 EMA area as well. 50 EMA area might be a little bit higher. But either way, I mean, that would give you a decent little pump right here if we can, you know, fill this little space up to 121 or uh, 120, 21 or the downtrend line. So I'm looking at calls on this. You even have a really nice demand zone here. So this is a rally base rally demand zone. You can see that it rallied super hard after that, came back for its first test at the, at the demand zone and had a really nice bounce to the upside. So this would probably be like the second or third time testing the demand zone. So Ideally, you don't want to see this zone dry up. You want to see a continuous strength uh, show that it's you know, uh, still a solid demand zone in order to go higher. But yeah, trend line's looking good. You got test one, test two, test three, test four. Like I said, as long as this is holding up, I mean, it's, it looks good for the longs here. 
But like I said, you want to get out before earnings. So you got about 10 days to trade this before that happens. So I'm looking at calls and QCOM. Just make sure that it holds this trend line. If it does start flushing the trend line, obviously you'd have a little bit more room to hold the demand zone low. But I mean, if it got down to 113 and you're in short-term calls, obviously that's that's a lot of risk just because you know, I mean, options, options can lose value pretty fast. So you do want to have like a tight stop, make sure it's holding the trend line. If it starts breaking the trend line, you know, just go ahead and get out. And honestly, if it does break the trend line, I wouldn't look at puts still just because, you know, you do have this demand zone. So if you wanted to look at puts eventually, it would need to break this trend line and get under the 113 demand zone low. So if it got out of this little green zone right here, that's a good area to start looking at puts. But otherwise, this is looking good for long, short term. I only say short term because we only have 10 days to earnings and we have no idea what it's going to do for earnings. So, yep. QCOM looking at calls, maybe look for a move up to 120.21 or the downtrend line. Next, we're going into ticker symbol Marvel Technologies. So this is MRVL. This looks pretty good. This is a third trend line test. So the third trend line test is actually a pretty good trade because that's when the trend officially gets established. So you can see here, when, it's, when it made the downtrend line, you got test one, test two, test three. Really nice rejection on test three. Actually came up for a fourth, even rejected off that. But this is actually the, only the third time that this trend line is tested for the uptrend. I guess you could maybe count this second candle right here as a third test, but they're pretty close together. So I would just consider this one clump. So this would be a, just a regular test two. This would be your test number three. I mean, if you drew it like this too, I mean, I guess you could consider that being the third test as well. But I like to use the wicks and you can see, I mean, I had a really nice wick reaction off the third test as well as this rally, or I'm sorry, this drop base rally demand zone. So this is a counter trend demand zone. You know, you got the heavy drop, it creates a base, rallies to the upside and you can see now that's coming back down. Got a really nice wick reaction to demand plus this uptrend line. So this is a test number three. Ideally, I mean, obviously it's making that symmetrical triangle, right? So you really can only put this up to the downtrend line maximum. So you're probably looking at day trades on this, uh, a swing trade. I mean, you wouldn't really have too much risk to reward before it hits the downtrend line. And you'd probably have to take profit there. So you do want to be looking at this short term, at least until it can, you know, either break out the symmetrical wedge to the upside or you know if it breaks down the symmetrical wedge to the downside and if you didn't know symmetrical wedges are bilateral so they can break either way you can see it's got you know an equal amount of tests uh, you got test three tests down here for the uptrend line you got you know three or four tests up here but overall this is looking you know that looks equal so you do have to wait for that to break out to the upside or the downside that will give you your confirmation uh, ideally i'm looking at causing this just because it's holding the uptrend line you also test the demand and I do want to see that move up to the downtrend line. So MRVO looking at calls. And for our fourth individual ticker here, we are looking at AMD. So this is actually going to be a put setup just because it's breaking the uptrend line. I can even remove this moving average setup here just so you can see this a little better. You got to test one, you got to test two, you got to test three here. It even bounced a little bit and even bounced off this back test zone right here at 88.94. So that tried to act as support. And then eventually it looks like it failed because you do have this daily close finally below the downtrend line as well as the uh, daily close below this 88.94. So as long as AMD is holding under this 88.94 and also holding below this trend line, you can ideally, I mean, this could start flushing pretty heavily. I'll even go ahead and add back these moving averages. You do, you can see it's holding up the 50 EMA right here. So this is just your regular 50. This is your regular 200 SMA down here. So, I mean, if it starts losing this 50 as well as it's, you know, losing that 88.94 and losing the uptrend line, that's three, you know, pretty major areas starting to break and this could flush pretty heavily. You can see you only have nine days left till earnings. This is another, you know, I probably wouldn't swing trade it to be honest. I'd probably just be looking for quick day trades and scalps while it's starting to break these levels. It will just need to hold that follow through and you do want to see it staying under that 88.94 and you, you know, you can maybe keep selling the rips as long as, you know, it's staying under the 88.94 and, you know, the staying below the uptrend line. So this is looking a little bearish. I mean, it's st obviously it's still holding over all the moving averages, still somewhat of an uptrend, but you are starting to see this early sign if it's starting to break that uptrend line after a failed test three. And the test three is usually where it's supposed to, you know, establish and start going higher. But now that it's failed, I would want to start seeing a little more sell volume pick up as well. You can see it's kind of, I mean, it's relatively low for, you know, a drop breaking in uh, the uptrend line. I could see, you know, I would want to see a little bit more sell volume to the downside. But either way, as long as it's holding under this 88.94, 
and holding under the uptrend line. I feel like this looks good for puts. You know, you do only have nine days though, so maybe don't swing trade it. Just, you know, keep a lookout for day trades, quick flushes to the downside, and this could pay. Another thing, you know, you do have the MACD signal here. You see this red arrow, that means the MACD signal did cross to the downside. So the MACD did cross to the downside, you know, about 19 days ago. So it's had that signal and it's been holding as well. As well, I mean, the the lines are starting to get under the, you know, the zero mark for the histogram. So that's interesting. That means, you know, the momentum's starting to slow up as well as you got the KDJ that gave you even earlier signal about, what is that, March 24th? And that's been holding its negative signal up here. You can see it stayed red this whole time. So momentum indicators have been slowing for this. But like I said, you do want it to stay under the 88.94, stay under the 50 EMA, as well stay under the uptrend line. Otherwise, I mean, you know, it could just reclaim and start going back up. I mean, chips are doing pretty good. NVIDIA is doing pretty good. I got some puts on NVIDIA that are pretty down right now, maybe like, maybe like 40, 50%. But I mean, it's all the way for May expiration. So I mean, we still got time to let it play out, but it has been chopping between that range. So yeah, chips have I mean, been on fire for the most part lately, but as well, I mean, some of the big ones have been stuck in a range. So you'd have to be careful with that. But yeah, AMD looking at puts, just make sure it stays under the level, make sure it stays under the uptrend, make sure it stays under the 50 EMA and you'll be good. Next, we're going into the SPY. So we finally did get a MACD cross to the downside. You can see this red arrow. That means that it finally signaled a cross down and you can see it and it did cross up here. You can see that little crossover, even the histogram starting to go a little red. So it could be a sign of momentum slowing up. QQQ, the NASDAQ actually gave uh, gave the red signal, you know, the, the negative crossover signal a couple days earlier. So that was the first to start, you know, crossing downward. But now SPY is starting to follow through and as well as, I mean, it's hitting the supply up here. So I've been pretty wary about calls up here. I've been okay, you know, still buying dips and stuff. I mean, I've, I've just been trading calls nonstop on SPY just because, I mean, every dip that you know, dips, I mean, it gets bought up. So as long as it's holding, you know, this 407.45 structure, I've been okay to, you know, keep looking at calls and stuff. You just don't want to buy them inside the supply zone. That's all. So as long as it's, you know, if it's right up here inside the zone, I'm not looking at calls. You know, I'm waiting for it to break 418. So this is kind of like the off limit zone. But I mean, as long as it's, you know, still around this 411, 412 area and this 407.45, that's fine to trade calls still because you do have this previous resistance here. We could even zoom in. You got the previous resistance that has pretty much acted as a base this whole time. I mean, every time it's, you know, hit this area, it's pretty much reclaimed it or held it pretty well. But I mean, it's been pretty choppy as, as well. So you kind of just have been having to do day trades on, on the spot just because, I mean, this has been a pretty slow couple of weeks. I mean, it's not like the greatest returns or anything. I mean, it's still in an uptrend, still going pretty good. You can see this uptrend line is still holding as well. So I wouldn't even feel bearish until it starts flushing that uptrend line. Once it starts flushing the uptrend line, I mean, that's a, another sign of momentum slowing. But you are starting to get some early signs, like you got the MACD cross to the downside. The KDJ is also turning red. But you did get some false signals right here in the KDJ as well. So we can't jump to conclusions just yet. Your third piece of confirmation, obviously, be if it you know starts going back under 407.45 which is this, you know, this previous resistance, which is also a very strong sell imbalance area. So you do want to see it getting back under that. If it starts getting under that, plus you have, you know, the, the momentum indicator slowing, as well as the uptrend line breaking, that's a good signal to start looking at shorts. So right now, can be overly bearish or anything just because of the MACD cross and the supply. I do need to see more from it. So we would need to, you know, see the uptrend line break, like I said, Get our 407.45 and hold the MACD cross to the downside. Otherwise, keep looking at dip buys. I mean, if it you know comes back down to the downtrend line, you can look at another dip buy. Keep doing it till it you know it doesn't work anymore. Once it stops working, and once you start getting those signals I was talking about at the uptrend line and the 407.45, good time to start looking at puts. But yeah, I mean, if you want to get in a swing trade here, you do have the supply going for you. You do have a small rejection, nothing crazy. If you wanted to, you know, get puts, you know, 30 to 60 days out, maybe 90 days or something, give you a couple months, let it chop up at the supply, let it, you know, make some more rejection candles, let it break the uptrend line. You would be a little early, but I mean, the VIX is super low. So volatility is super cheap right now, which means puts and overall option contracts are very cheap right now, which is, I mean, another reason to be careful just because, I mean, the market can stay in a range for, you know, pretty good amount of time. So yeah, that's for the SPY. Obviously, it's the same levels of focus as last week. You just want to see, see it staying over 412 short term, also staying over the uptrend line. And the overall structure area is the 407.45. So that's kind of like the structure low that has to hold. If it gets under that, I mean, it's 
good chance momentum will start to shift and it could head down in this demand, you know, at, you know, four or four. So as for the spy, otherwise, I mean, if you're like a breakout trader, you're going to have to wait for that 418.31 to get taken out, which is the supply zone high. Otherwise, I mean, just, you know, don't take calls inside supply. If it's trading outside of it and still holding your structure levels at 411.92 or 407.45, you're fine. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's for the spy. Just be careful. Next, we're going into the QQQ. So this is absolutely unchanged. We have the same levels as last week. We got the 321.51. So the 321.51 comes from this area right here. It rejected right there and it rejected short term right there as well. And you can see why this, you know, this 321.51 has stated, you know, our main level of resistance because it keeps rejecting off of it. So it rejected pretty hard off of it Tuesday and fell all the way back to our previous resistance, which also has been acting as support in these areas. So been stuck between the same range. And I hope you guys can see why this 313.68 to 321.51 every week. I've said this is our tradable range uh, because, I mean, now it, it just won't leave it. And you can see, I mean, it rejected off the 321.51 perfectly, also bounced off the 313.68 level perfectly. So, I mean, I can't really say much here. It's still holding structure, looking bullish. The MACD did cross to the downside, but, I mean, it's not breaking any structure. So, there's no confirmation of, you know, us going lower until we start getting under the 313.68. Once it gets back within the previous resistance, that's when you start looking at puts or, you know, maybe waiting for a dip buy at demand at 308, which is the same thing I said last week. So sorry if this sounds repetitive, but nothing changed, as you can see. I mean, it's just staying in the same range. So if it did get under that three, you know, that 313.68, that would be a confirmed double top. Or, you know, if it maybe like 312 max, if it got under 312, that's a really good, you know, confirmed double top as long as the one day candle you know, it's closing below that. So yeah, so we just have to wait, keep buying the dip off 313.68. It's working pretty well. And, you know, just be careful once it gets up to 321.51, don't be buying calls up here. You know, don't maybe don't rush into puts until you get a nice rejection and even show you here. So I want to show you how a short term signal would look if you were to, if you know, if you want to know when to get into puts, you can see we gapped up here into 321.51 that Tuesday on the QQQ. This would be your rejection candle. This is an ideal rejection candle. Plus you got a gap in order to fill back down. So that's an ideal put setup. Pulling into your major 321.51 on the 15 minute time frame. You have the gap below and you have this really nice, you know, 30 or this nice 15 minute candle taking out the opening range low and, you know, filling the gap. So that's your ideal put setup. And that's why you don't want to take calls once it gets up here because you just don't know if it's going to do this. But as well, you want to wait for that signal and this second bar right here at 945, you see down there, that's a really good signal to go ahead and take puts. And you can see after it just totally dumped, once it filled the gap, ranged all day. So yeah, that's why you want to be getting in at the major levels. And then once it gets back down here, you can see why, I mean, this is a mid range. This is not your 313.68. Every time you see the 313.68 get tested on the 15 minute time frame, look, huge bounce off 313.68, huge bounce off 313.68 huge bounce off 313.68 you got a gap up slash reclaim over 313.68 huge rally so yeah that's why you want to wait till it gets down there even uh looks like right here i mean it got really close to it nice little rebound so as long as it's close to it you know at least you know within the range that's good but otherwise i mean these little middle areas not my favorite just because i mean it, it could keep going down or you know i mean it could make a support somewhere else but i really like these critical levels and that's going to be that 321.51 and the 313.68 and you can see exactly why so yeah that's for the qqq i just really wanted to highlight on a shorter term time frame how you could you know be monetizing off this and you can see the 313 1868 came from over here and your 321.51 has just been the same resistance all the way from the September slash August high. So yeah, that's your tradable range. Just keep an eye out for that. Make sure you mark them on your chart. Next, we're going into the IWM. So we're focused on this 179.26. Pretty sure last week I said the same thing. You just, you know, I couldn't put us any higher than 179.26 because this is a major resistance. It tapped here, rejected really hard, tapped here, rejected really hard. And you have, you know, multiple candles here as well as just a chop range. I mean, it's just has not been able to clear that. We also set an alert at this uptrend line and you can see it broke it briefly at a nice quick little flush. We could even go down to the one hour. So you can see once it broke the uptrend line that we marked, I mean, it had a nice little flush here, about half a percent, huge wake down into here, but eventually to bounce back up. So, I mean, you would have to be really quick on exiting down here at 175s or so, you know, 
if you want to capitalize off this. But either way, I mean, this this uptrend line is still broken. So this could turn into something. But I mean, it will start needing to break in more levels to the downside. I need a little bit more confirmation. If we go back to the daily, you can see Friday's candle is obviously not your most bearish candle in the world. You got a really lower shadow wick here. So even though it broke, it was able to, you know, push up all the way into the close, or at least, you know, push up pretty hard off lows. So you're going to see a little bit more of like a bearish, you know, full body candle like this, even though, I mean, even full body candles like this can have a follow up day the next day with a big bullish day. You just don't know. So we will need to see it getting under that 175.90, which is Friday's low. If it gets under that, that's a pretty good, it's a pretty good probability it'll flush, you know, down to the 172s at this little support right here. Yeah. I mean, you can see, I mean, it's failing at 179. 26. It's also the 50 EMA. If we zoomed out, this is your 50 EMA it's trending. Uh, you get a rejection off of that. You got your dotted 200 SMA right there. Sorry, the magnet's kind of staying attached. You got your 200 SMA right here, the dots. So it does need to get over the downtrend line as well as get over the moving averages in order, you know, for the bull structure to come back. Otherwise, I mean, this is considered a downtrend. You know what I mean? So it does need to get over the 179.26, get over the moving averages and get over the downtrend line in order to be bullish again. But right now, we're starting to get a little hint into an uptrend line break. Uh, I do need to see a little bit more confirmation, though, just because this this Friday candle is just not ideal to me just because of that lower shadow wick. That means buying pressure picked up. That means, you know, people came in to buy the dip urgently. So, yeah. Uh, we do need to see a little bit more follow through in that. If it can get under that Friday low, expect to see that 172.53. Otherwise, you're really going to be waiting for this to break out of there. So we don't need to see a little bit more data on that. So just pay attention to that. So pay attention to Friday's low. And then, you know, if you want to stay bullish on this, you do you need to wait for that. 179.26 and the moving averages and the downtrend line to break out. As for the IWM, really nothing setting up here yet. Need a little bit more data. All right, and next we're going into the VIX. So I finally plugged in the two weeks of data that I was missing. So I didn't have an updated number for the 2022 to 2023 average close. I finally do. I'm sitting at 2441. So it dropped from the 2460s to 2441. So it dropped, you know, about 20 cents. It's pretty good, and the VIX is just being, being getting smashed, so it's understandable why it dropped that much. So ideally for this, I mean, you could see, I mean, it's still holding up to 1634. I don't know if you guys remember, I said I needed to get under that 1706 in order to see that 1634, and, you know, it could take the market higher. And you can see at the 1634, I think I showed you this a couple weeks ago, maybe last week. The 1634 comes from this January low in 2022. So that's where that came from. That's how I got that. And that's why, you know, once I said it got under 1706, I expect that level to be hit just because that was the only level under 1706 that was pretty, you know, somewhat recent. But otherwise, if this 1634 doesn't hold, you could see this free space down to this little red support at 1473. So this would be stupid low. This would be very low for the VIX. And I would expect the market to be, you know, just be melting up gradually uh, painfully and slowly so a pretty healthy vix i feel like you know uh, for bears like you, you want to see getting over that 20 right that psychological 20 you can see every time it shoots over 20 and gets a nice close above it that's where you know maybe some short-term fear comes in you get a short-term correction before you know it starts trending lower so for the bears i do want to see getting over 20 before you start you know panicking going crazy with the puts you do want to see getting over that 20 that's your signal once it gets back over 20, you know, puts her back in the game. You know, premiums aren't going to be overpriced. Even if it gets over 20, you can still, you know, know safely that premiums are below the 2022 to 2023 average close 30 days out. So your average is going to be 2441. So once it gets up to 2441, you can assume premiums are starting to get a little bit elevated, but they are still average. Once it gets over that 2441, you can assume premiums, premiums are expensive. Maybe the market's getting a little oversold and you know stocks are you know pretty much tanking once it gets up to these kind of levels that's just one way to read the vix but either way like i said i mean this is getting pretty low i mean this is like levels we haven't seen in a good little minute but as long as the 1634 is holding up i feel like there's still a chance you know it could bounce back up but i mean if it breaks the 1634 that is a pretty good shot down to 1473 and that would just be really low guys i mean that would just i feel like the market would be way too slow for trading the spy and stuff you'd probably have to go to you know, high beta names, like high growth names, high growth tech names as well, because they have volatility, right? And, you know, the VIX is getting this low. The SPY isn't that fun to trade anymore. Just because it's getting so low, uh, I mean, the cost for protection and insurance is getting cheap. That means not enough people are demanding for insurance for their portfolios. And that's kind of why you see the 
you know, the melt up in the markets when volatility gets this low. That's why I feel like once it gets over 20, it's a pretty healthy spot to start looking at puts again. You know, if it gets that daily close over 20, that means, you know, people are starting to price back in fear in the market a little bit as well. You know, the SPX, that means the SPX options are going crazy and there's, you know, starting to be a little bit more cost to hedge. And that's a you know pretty good signal to start, you know, looking at protection for your portfolio or start looking at shorts on the S&P 500, you know, the SPY, et cetera. But like I said, I mean, the 1634 is just your level of focus. doesn't need to stay over that and it could start heading back up. Otherwise, if it breaks that, I mean, expect that 1473 level of focus. And that's for the VIX. It's pretty slow, guys. I mean, we need to see a little bit more, maybe even get back above 17 as a start. Once it gets back above 17, then we could, you know, maybe start looking for the 18s. The VIX can just spike out of nowhere. So, but like I said, my bearish signal is over 20. So need to wait for that for, you know, starting to look at spy shorts and all that. Next, we're going on to the DXY. So this is the US dollar pretty much unchanged from last week. Still held the same, you know, 182 support. So I got the same outlook as last week. I mean, I feel like it, eventually that this could bounce up and start heading up to the 103s. Same thing as last week. You can see it looks like Monday at a pretty nice start and then just chop the rest of the week. So I feel like after this Monday candle, if we zoom in, I mean, that, that could have been a nice start to a move higher, but you can see, I mean, it just stayed in the range. So there's been a lack of currency volatility here, but it is still holding overall structure at 182. So as long as 100, 182 is holding and also this 101.29 that we cover every freaking week, as long as this base over here is holding, you know, dollar is still considered at an elevated level. And, you know, the dollar could bounce and then take stocks lower. But, I mean, if it gets under that 182, that is a pretty good bullish bullish signal. As long as, the you know, the inverse correlation between stocks and the dollar are holding. My personal opinion, I feel like as long as the support is holding, there's a good chance that the dollar will bounce back up to 103. Maybe just hit the 50 EMA before trying to go lower. But right now, I'm feeling a little bit more bullish on the dollar. Maybe a little bit neutral just because it's so choppy. So, yeah, I feel like this could head higher, maybe bring stocks lower. But uh, we will need to see more signals from that. Right now, I mean, there's just not not too much going on. Still holding the, you know, the 182. So, that's important. Um, maybe it's got a little downtrend line here. I need to add this magnet. So, you want to make sure you have your magnet on when you're using trading view because it will precisely give you your level as you can see it is breaking out of the downtrend line a little bit so this one bullish candle i mean it tried to break out and then it's just been selling off since but as long as this i mean it's holding this could be a pretty good signal for the dollar to start going higher and it could st send stocks lower so as long as this little breakout signal is holding right here short term i feel like that's pretty good and you can see expect a move you know up to the 103s or the 50 ema and you can see the kdj is also pointing upward so this gave a signal a couple of days ago and overall it's still holding let's see what the macd is saying add the macd back on you can see i mean the macd signal came days ago it actually came all the way here at april 10th on monday and it's been holding the same signal since so you can see it's still in a positive crossover to the upside so you know, with the KDJ, the support holding, and the MACD, and the downtrend breakout, I'm going to have to say that the dollar can go higher here. You know, I could be wrong, but I got four different indicators pointing, you know, for a move up short term, at least. So I'm going to go with that. As long as this 182 is holding, so your support's the most important thing, you know, your trend line, and then, you know, your indicators are second. But you can see it supports holding, trend line breakout, and then you come in with your indicators, and you can see momentum is starting to point up a little bit. So yeah, that's for the dollar. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This will be the last thing we go over. I hope you guys at least get some educational value out of this if you're not taking any trades actively. And that's okay if you're not taking the trades. I mean, not all of them are going to work out. You know, you might miss out on some money. You might, you know, avoid a loss just from, you know, sitting on your hands, you know, trying to learn from it rather than, you know, just take action on it. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Hopefully this week turns out pretty good. It's going to be really volatile, I think, uh, especially for overnight risk because you're, you know, holding with a big earnings, you know, a big earnings season here this week. You got so many household names. And then you do have the, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge on Friday, the PCE index. So, I mean, we have a lot going on this week. Maybe we'll see a spike in the VIX. Maybe we'll see a spike in the dollar. You know, that's that would be two uh, signs of volatility coming back. So we'll need to see a little bit more from those two. And then, you know, maybe we can start seeing some downside in the market. But right now, I mean, we're just melting up slowly but surely. Structures are holding like we went over the, in the indexes. The IWM, not so much, still downtrending. But your overall SPY and QQQ are your strongholds right now. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to get this chopped up, edited, and sent out to y'all. I love you guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our x -Trades YouTube channel. And I'm out.